for this celebration of the Holy Trinity is from the book of Genesis, the first chapter. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse, and it was so. And God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were above gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas. And let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seeds in its fruit. You shall have them with food. And every beast of the earth and every bird of the heavens to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food.
and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The second reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, the second chapter. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstools. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. The Holy Gospel written according to the 28th chapter of St. Matthew, the 16th verse. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Behold, I am with you always, to the end of the age. We confess the Athanasian Creed, as found on page 319. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. Whoever does not keep it whole and unwise will, without doubt, perish eternally. And the Catholic
Spirit, the Father, and of the Son, neither made nor created nor put out, but proceeding. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is before or after another, none is greater or less than another. Jesus the Christ, 
who told his disciples before he ascended into heaven, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. This is God the Holy Spirit, who guided the pens and the prophets and the apostles to write God's revealed and errant words, who gives you the faith to believe God's word and confess that Jesus is Lord. It's your God the Holy Spirit who brings you the forgiveness of your sins, life and salvation through that very same faith in Christ. Or is your God some other God? In other words, is your God the God of the Bible? The three-in-one God confessed in the Apostles Nicene and Athanasian creeds? Or is it some other God? We must be clear and we must be precise your eternal life depends on what you believe and who you believe in. Because as St. Peter clearly announced to the rulers, elders, and scribes in Jerusalem, there is no salvation in anyone else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which you must be saved. Just moments ago, we confirmed this as our belief too. When we confess together the words of the Athanasian Creed, saying, Whoever will be saved before all things, it is necessary that he hold the Catholic, that is, universal Christian faith. Which faith, except everyone do keep whole and undefiled, without doubt he shall perish everlastingly. Grim words. The Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity, and Trinity in unity, neither confounding the persons nor dividing the substance. And this creed, which we confess, which bears Athanasius' name, is the last of the creeds to be embraced by the Christian Church. The Athanasian Creed bears his name because Athanasius steadfastly refused to compromise on the Bible's teachings about the Trinity, specifically false teachings about God's Son. You see, Jesus has always been the problem for the old Adam, for the skeptic, and for the unbeliever. Our human reason either wants Jesus to be all God and therefore not human, or all human and therefore not God. But what do we believe according to the scriptures and confess in the creeds? Simply this. It is necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe in the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at the same time both God and God. Again, we might take this for granted, having heard this, grown up with it, learned it, believed it through the power of the Holy Spirit. And yet not all do. In fact, many say they believe in God, but they do not have this faith, and therefore do not have saving faith, and they will perish eternally. Because saving faith in the only true God recognizes that God became man in Jesus. In fact, it is the uniqueness of his two natures, being both God and man, which allows Jesus to live the perfect sinless life and be the perfect sinless sacrifice to pay for the sins of the whole world. And that is why most of the Athanasian Creed was written, to counter the misunderstanding about God, specifically the Son, and to clarify precisely who the God of the Bible really is try and explain the divine mystery of the most holy trinity. You see, most religions can accept the notion of a creator God who we serve and obey. This is the most basic fact of the law, what we are to do. And this appeals to our human nature. It appeals to our flesh. Most religions can also accept that God is spirit, that we can't see him, maybe can't even experience him in this life. But to say that God became man, that the very word that was there speaking creation into existence took on human flesh, that he became one of us, and not for the purpose of ruling, but for dying. Well, that's just too much for the human mind and the old Adam to comprehend. And so, down through the centuries, people have tried to explain 
explain God with limited human reason rather than listen to and trust the word itself, which describes and points to Christ as God made man and God dying for the sins of the very people he created. That's exactly what God does. That's what we're celebrating today. That the mystery of the Trinity is good news for us. Because when you get the Word, you get God. For with the Word, you get the Father who sends His Son and the Comforting Spirit who works through that Word to bring you forgiveness, eternal salvation, and life itself. And that's the good news. That's the mystery of the Gospel which is expressed in the creeds, especially the Athanasian. After all, this triune nature of God is one of the profound mysteries of the Christian faith, and therefore baffles human reason and can only be understood through the Spirit. How can God be three yet one? And yet, even while the word of Trinity is never mentioned in the Bible, this conclusion about the nature of God is undeniable to any person who allows the Scriptures to interpret what they believe. Even in the first three verses of Genesis, already there at the very beginning of the word, we have the Trinity implied, if not mentioned explicitly. When you have the Father creating out of nothing with his words, you have the Spirit hovering over the face of the waters, and yes, indeed, you even have the Son present creating through the speaking of the Father. For according to the evangelist St. John, in the beginning was the word. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all present in and with the Word from the very beginning. For while they are three persons, they are one God. And they are united in their purpose. You see, God is unique in His persons and unified in His substance and purpose for you. Because God's purpose is to summar is summarized in the Son's words that we heard from Matthew's Gospel. To go and make disciples of all nations. And he does this by placing the name of the triune God upon those who are being saved. Through baptizing and then through the teaching of the church. In other words, God's purpose is to bring you salvation through the word and sacrament. As Jesus himself said, apart from the word you can do nothing. No faith, no salvation. All comes back to him through the work of the Trinity for you. You see, we dare not fool ourselves into thinking that there are other gods or other names by which we may be saved. The Catholic faith, that is the Christian faith, is clear. Not to call upon the name of Baal, Zeus, Allah, Buddha, Krishna, Jah, or Gaia. We're not to make gods for ourselves or in our own image. We have to put our trust in the God of the bank, our good works, our good deeds, or worship the God of the ball, youth, tolerance, or even Mother Earth herself, as so many do these days. Instead, we have been created in the image of the triune God who made heaven and earth. And we are to confess Him alone as the only true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we are worship to worship Him alone. One God in unity are in Trinity and Trinity in unity. This is our God, the only true God, revealed to us in Christ and through His Word, is the unique and only God. He's not generic and He's not androgynous as so many make Him out to be now. The great I Am is the Father who created heaven and earth and all things. He is the Son who with the Father and the Spirit created all things. Your God is the Redeemer who died for the sins of the world. He's also the divine spirit who brings faith and makes hold you, holy children of God, through his work. So we must always remember, God is the one who chooses to bring us faith and make us his disciples through means. Never apart from the word or the sacraments. You see, he chooses to bind himself to the word and in the sacraments so that you can know where to find him and receive him. You do receive him. The holy baptism. That's his means of making you his new disciples. First through water and the word that people are saved. It's through baptism applied in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that places his name upon you, washes away your sins. Whether you be an infant or an adult, you become a new creation. 
is to that word poured out with the water that grace is also received and to whom faith is worked again by God. And this blessed gift and this new man that daily emerges from word and sacrament, created new in God's image, is not created by human blood or human decision, but by the power of the Holy Spirit and the will of God. A person is born again in that name of God by his command and by his authority. You see, water without the word is just plain water. The water with the name is a holy flood for you and your children and your salvation. Again, that's how disciples are made. That's how disciples are kept in the faith through God's promises and his word. And that's why we as the church are commanded to go and baptize and teach. Again, not in any old name. Not in just generic God that could mean anything. It's in a very specific name of the God. For as God speaking to the prophet Isaiah said, Before me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord. And besides me there is no Savior. There are those who teach deeds, not creeds. <clears throat> That's just an ignorant and foolish way of saying what we do is more important than what we believe. But just as Jesus told his disciples before his ascension, disciples must be baptized and taught. Well, baptism brings new spiritual life to the new Christian. That person must also be taught the truth of the scriptures. And that truth must be maintained and never compromised. You see, we are taught how to behave and act and keep learning through our entire life in so many secular worldly things. How much more do we need to be taught and nurtured and maintained in the faith throughout this earthly life that leads to salvation and eternal life? And that's why we need to continue to confess the creeds. So the truth will be taught and carried on and handed down in our church and also in this world. That's why we confess creeds, even long ones like the Athanasian Creed, that might be difficult to get through. But we confess them because they bring us the truth. They remind us that He alone is the true God, and His name upon us. And there's faith and salvation to be found in no other. It's a reminder that we've been baptized into the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That there's no other God who went to the cross to die in our place. There is no other God who expects nothing from us to earn His love, but then gives it to us freely for the sake of His Son. So that we might know and remember that there's no other God who created, redeemed, or sanctified us, saving us from ourselves. Confess the creeds to remind ourselves that His name is upon us and we're part of His church, which He made through His flesh and blood. Not ours, not our blood, but his own blood poured out onto and for each one of us. We rejoice in this name of the Trinity, which is on us, given to us in our baptism. Remember until the day we die, remembering that there is no other God, that he has promised to raise you from the dead. Because this is the Catholic universal Christian faith, which except a man will be faithfully and firmly and cannot be saved. These words of the creeds remind us, again, who God is and how he has saved us. It's through faith alone in him that we are saved. This is what we believe to be true, and this is what we confess. In Jesus' name, amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You have been watching the Divine Service at Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Carlisle, Iowa. Join us this coming Sunday at the Divine Service, which begins at 9 a.m. Our Divine Service is followed by Adult Bible Study and Sunday School at 10.30. You're also invited to join us for Vespers and Catechesis for the entire family on Wednesday evenings beginning at 6.30 p.m. We also gather for the morning prayer service of Matins on Thursday mornings at 9.30 a.m. Holy Cross is a member of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and is located at 1100 Market Street, Carlisle, Iowa.